quick question. What would life be like without power to drive the technologies that are bound in our age? Would these technologies be invented even without the promise of power to run them with? Yes, electricity was discovered by Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Edison invented the first bulb. Without the genius mind of Michael Faraday, who invented electric motors and electromagnetism and founded the law on which modern technologies rest on, probably the world will still have been antique. In today's video, we will look at the legendary scientist Michael Faraday from a very humble background who developed the theories that paved the way for modern technologies like Transformer ETC. We hope this video gives you the courage you need to believe in yourself and pursue your biggest dreams. If you are new here, consider subscribing so that you won't miss other exciting videos like this. Michael Faraday was born on September 22, 1791 in Newington Botts, which is now part of the London Borough of Southworks, but was then a suburban part of Surrey. His family was not well off. His father, James, was a blacksmith who had migrated from the north of England earlier in 1791 to look for work. His mother was a countrywoman of great calm and wisdom who supported her son emotionally through a difficult childhood. Faraday was one of four children, all of whom were hard put to get enough to eat since their father was often ill and incapable of working steadily. Faraday later recalled being given one loaf of bread that had to last him for a week. The family belonged to a small Christian sect called Sandemanians that provided spiritual sustenance to Faraday throughout his life. It was the single most important influence upon him and strongly affected how he approached and interpreted nature. Faraday received only the rudiments of an education, learning to read, write and cipher in a church Sunday school. At an early age, he began to earn money by delivering newspaper for a book dealer and book binder. And at the age of 14, he was apprenticed to the man. Unlike the other apprentices, Faraday took the opportunity to read some of the books brought in for rebinding. The article on electricity in the third edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica particularly fascinated him. Using old bottles and lumber, he made a crude electrostatic generator and did simple experiments. He also built a weak voltaic pile with which he performed experiments in electrochemistry. Father's great opportunity came when he was offered a ticket to attend chemical lectures by Sir Humphrey Darby at the Royal Institute of Great Britain in London. Faraday went, sat, absorbed it all, recorded the lectures in his notes and returned to the book binder with a seemingly unrealizable hope of entering the temple of science. He sent a bound copy of his notes to Davy along with a letter asking for employment but there was no opening. Davy did not forget however and when one of his laboratory assistants was dismissed for brawling, he offered Faraday a job. Friday began as Davy's laboratory assistant and learned chemistry at the elbow of one of the greatest practitioners of the day. It has been said with some truth that Friday was Davy's greatest discovery. Things, however, weren't as smooth for Friday later as they were until then. In the lengthy tour that Davy had set out on, from 1813 until 1815, his valets did not accompany him. As such, Friday had to fill up for his vacancy. While biased by classism, Davy's wife refused to treat Faraday as an equal and made life hell for Faraday, who, worn out by the torture, even thought of giving up on science altogether. In the year 1821, Friday was appointed as the acting superintendent of the House of the Royal Institute. Friday married Sarah Barnard on June 12, 1821. They met through their families at the Sandemanian Church and he confessed his faith to the Sandemanian congregation the month after they were married. They had no children. Friday was a devout Christian. His Sandemanian denomination was an offshoot of the Church of Scotland. Well after his marriage, he served as a deacon and for two terms as an elder in the meeting house of his youth. His church was located at Paul's Alley in the Barbican, 
This meeting house relocated in 1862 to Bansbury Grove, East Linton. This North London location was where Faraday served the final two years of his second term as an elder before his resignation from the post. Biographers have noted that a strong sense of the unity of God and nature pervaded Faraday's life and work. Faraday's earliest contributions to chemistry was while he was working as an assistant to Davy. He was involved in the study of chlorine. Faraday also conducted experiments on the diffusion of gases. Additionally, he succeeded in liquefying several gases, investigating the alloys of steel and producing several new kinds of gas intended for the optical purposes. One of Faraday's most notable works was the invention of the earliest form of Bunsen burner, as we call it today, which is still in use today in the science laboratories around the world as a most suitable source of heat. His extensive work in the field of chemistry can be found out from the fact that he discovered the chemical substance benzene, a chemical compound of carbon and hydrogen. Faraday also discovered two new compounds in chlorine and carbon. While one is used in smoke grenades, the other is employed in the area of dry cleaning and spot removing. Faraday is also credited for discovering the laws of electrolysis and for popularizing terminologies such as anode, cathode, electrode, and iron, for which he took the help of William Wewell. It is said that Faraday first reported what we today know as metallic nanoparticles in 1847. Faraday researched that the optical properties of gold colloids differed from those of the corresponding bulk metal and it was this discovery which marked the birth of nanoscience. Faraday created a storm in the field of electricity and magnetism with his work. His research in electricity has an enormous influence on the development of mathematics. Faraday's first success in the field of electricity came when he successfully built the first electric motor. The experiments and inventions that he undertook then formed the foundation of modern electromagnetic technology. He continued his laboratory work exploring electromagnetic properties and materials and developing requisite experience. In an attempt to find out whether a magnetic field could regulate the flow of current in an adjacent wire or not, Faraday had set up a circuit but he found no relationship. The next seven years of Faraday's life was dedicated in the arena of optical quality, heavy glass, borosilicate of lead which he used in his future studies connecting light with magnetism. Two years following Humphrey Davy's death, Faraday got involved in a series of experiments wherein he discovered electromagnetic induction. However, the pinnacle came only when he wrapped two insulated coils of wire around an iron ring and found that upon passing a current through one coil, momentary current was induced in the other coil. A phenomenon which is today known as mutual induction. In later experiments, Faraday discovered that a changing magnetic field produces an electric field. This relation was used by James Clerk Maxwell later and is today one amongst the four Maxwell equations. Faraday afterwards applied these principles to construct the electric dynamo, the precursor of modern power generators. In the year 1839, Faraday conducted a series of experiments to examine the fundamental nature of electricity to produce the phenomena of electrostatic attraction, electrolysis, and magnetism. Faraday used static batteries and animal electricity. When Faraday worked on the theory that electromagnetism flowed into the empty space around a conductor, a concept at the very base of electromechanics. It was first rejected but later approved. However, Faraday did not leave to see its acceptance. It was in 1845 that Faraday researched the notion that many materials displayed a weak repulsion from a magnetic field which is termed as diamagnetism. Additionally, he also discovered the fact that the plane of polarization of linearly polarized light 
could be rotated by the application of an external magnetic field aligned in the direction in which the light moved. This phenomenon is today termed as Faraday's effect. During his work on static electricity, Faraday's experiment displayed that the charge resided only on the exterior or a charged conductor. An exterior charge had no influence on anything enclosed within a conductor. This was since the exterior charges redistributed in such a way that the interior fields due to them cancelled. The protective effect is used in what we now know as a Faraday cage. At the Royal Institute of Great Britain, Faraday was elected a member of the Royal Society in 1824. The next year, he was appointed director of the laboratory. Later in 1833, Faraday was bestowed upon with the position Fullerian Professor of Chemistry, which he was appointed for life. Apart from the scientific research that Faraday undertook at the Royal Institute, he also worked at numerous other projects given to him by private enterprises and the British government. Faraday spent a considerable amount of time in the construction and operation of lighthouses. He was also active in what is today known as environmental science. While he aided with the planning and judging of exhibits for the Great Exhibition in 1851 in London, Faraday was also involved in advising the National Gallery on the cleaning and protection of its arts collection. Michael Faraday was deeply involved in the education sector as well. His series of lectures on the chemistry and physics of flames at the Royal Institute is still regarded as one of the earliest Christmas lectures for young minds, a practice that is still prevalent today. Faraday is known to have given Christmas lectures for a record 19 times between 1827 and 1860. For this accomplishment, the University of Oxford granted Faraday a Doctor of Civil Law degree, honorary, in June 1832. In 1838, he was elected a foreign member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and later in 1844, Faraday became one of the eight foreign members elected to the French Academy of Sciences. Meanwhile, in his life, Faraday declined the offer of knighthood and twice refused the post of the President of the Royal Society, which was offered to him. In 1848, Michael Faraday was honored a grace and favor house in Hampton Court in Middlesex, free of all expense or upkeep, as a result of his representation by the Prince Consort. Ten years later, he retired and lived there. Michael Faraday breathed his last on August 25, 1867. At his house in Hampton Court, he was buried in the Descendants non-Anglican section in Highgate Cemetery after turning down the burial in Westminster Abbey. Nevertheless, Faraday has a memorial plaque near Newton's tomb. To pay tribute to the works of this great scientist, a statue of Faraday stands in Savile Place, London, outside the Institute of Engineering and Technology. London also houses a memorial in the memory of Faraday which is situated in the Elephant and Castle Gertory system near Faraday's birthplace at Newington Boards. Michael Faraday's story teaches us that despite where we come from, our humble background and the challenges we face in trying to rise through societal strata, we can always find greatness if we persevere.